Hello dear everyone, welcome to this Q&A with me Kalida on cross training. This is one of a series of a couple of Q&As on different topics that I've been doing this week and in this video I will be talking about why I think cross training can benefit dancers and movers of any style. Also which cross training types I have been doing and how they have helped me. And finally also why I feel that you don't have to worry if the things that interest you, if your interests are so varied that it feels like they are not helping each other or even might hinder each other because that's something I have lived through as well. And I found a way to figure out, I figured out a way, sorry, on how to combine my interests in such a way that they support each other. So if you want to check out yesterday's video this is where i talked about what i'm doing online right now but also on how i am able to keep creating even in these times how i practice my creativity and how i take care of myself it's about meditation uh, my method which is a very <laughs> rough one i got it from a book also on journaling how i journal i've combined a few systems and found a way that works for me and also a little bit uh, philosophizing about um, how to take care of yourself in these crazy times. It's a long video. The Q&A of yesterday was a long video because this is new to me and it takes me a while to get warmed up. So <laughs> I will put them on YouTube with subtitles and also make chaptering. Then you can choose, like with this video later, you can choose what topic you want to learn about. So you have a long video, but with chapters, then it's not so bad. <laughs> because I know I talk a lot. I process things by talking and also by writing. This is how I, I sort my thoughts and I hope whatever comes out today, it's a bit improvised like yesterday also, is maybe of help to you guys. On Monday, so earlier this week, I put out another Q&A for my boosties. These are my online students and I have put that video also on YouTube, it's also an hour, because I started talking about the online classes first, what we've been doing, what we will be doing, but then it progressed into why I started Boost, why I started my online classes that incorporate cross training, so strength, flexibility, and dance. And I want to go deeper today into what types of cross training may be helpful and how you can make them work for you why I advise you to do it. If you're here, say hello so I can see who is there. <laughs> and you can ask me questions also during this Q&A or after. If I see it during, I will, I will put them in this video. If I see them later, it'll be for next month. I will be doing these once per month. So in the Q&A about Boost, that's where I talk about how I got out of chronic pain. I had a tailbone injury. This is a long story. I didn't tell about it in the Boost Q&A. I hurt my tailbone. It uh, worked its way up my body in 15 years and I couldn't almost, I almost couldn't move anymore. I had shoulder and hip blockages and my spine was misaligned. So it limited me in every sense. And I, I was considering stopping teaching, stopping dancing because I couldn't physically uh, reconcile with how I felt. And I got out of it through movement. And how I did that, what I did, that's what I share in my how I got over spinal misalignment. <laughs> so that's my first Q&A of this week. The second one of yesterday is how I keep creating. And today about cross training, which is a very, very exciting to me topic. It's something I'm passionate about because I, like many of you, because I did a little um, questionnaire, questionnaire in my Kalida online Facebook group, that's the big group. This one is little, but it may grow. This group is especially for um, talking about cross training and my different inspirations, everything that supports my dance, but is not dance. That's what will be happening here in this group. It's connected to my blog, which I talked about yesterday also, Joy of Movement blog, that's hence the name. And that blog is something I started a couple of years ago. I blogged daily for a while. And in it, you will find tips on flexibility, martial arts, about dance training of different kinds that I do, my favorite books, my favorite resources, podcasts, so everything that inspires me and has changed me for the better, you can find it in the blog. So I will link to whatever blog post matches what I say in these three Q and A's of this week. And at, so by this weekend, you will find everything on YouTube, Kalida, is my YouTube name, so it's youtube.com 
slash Kalida. That's youtube.com slash Kalida. You will find a playlist for the Q&As. You find my rhythm and dance series for dancers. And you find all my tutorials of dance from last year, as well as my tip drops, which is movement tips that you get every Friday, as well as all my performances, because I've been performing for 19 years now. And <laughs> it's been a year today. It's been a year since I've been on stage and I miss it a lot. I also am missing my martial arts classes a lot. I'm, uh, what I do currently, what I used to do before lockdown was um, studying ballet with an amazing teacher in weekly classes, studying points, which I started only four years ago. So as an adult, as 37 year old that had no points training whatsoever in her life, and I used to be inflexible as a kid, I was able to start doing points. It was badly at first, but now it's almost looking like dance. So anything is possible and it's never too late. Those are my two messages of today. Uh, so I do ballet. I started doing ballet. I will talk about how I got into it. I do point work. First I did ballet for 10 years, then I started points work. I do martial arts and that's Taekwondo, Korean uh, kicking and punching, to say it in, in a very, um, <laughs> I'll say very common way and Korean sword art, Heidong Gumdo. So that's the art of Korean sword. Mm -hmm. So those are the four main hobbies that I have next to belly dance, which is my main, my main thing I do. Also the thing that I teach, also where everything comes together that I do. But in order to be able to do ballet and points and kicking and punching and sword, which is pretty heavy on the arms if you're a girl <laughs> and untrained. I do other things to support these different hobbies. So there's a level underneath that. And that's what I want to go into for cross training today. So if you have a main hobby, you can have different hobbies that are related or not, also movement, but then to make all of this better, there's only limited time, yes. My problem was when I started belly dancing and did not do anything else, that it took me so much time to get better. I, I got better quickly in the beginning and then there was a long, long, long plateau where I was drilling, drilling movements and my technique got better. It did get better, but slowly. And then as soon as it, I was able to focus on something, all the rest of my technique became lower in level. So it was like spinning plates. I was not able to keep up. I wasn't able to keep up and progress as much as I wanted to and it frustrated me to no end. On top of that, I had chronic pain back then, but I got out of it. I will, <laughs> I will link to that video how I did that. It's all connected. All connected to movement and on using cross-training to your benefit. Being smart about movement gives you more opportunity. It gives you the opportunity to do more. But first, if you are feeling overwhelmed, also if now you're feeling yeah, these are crazy times anyway. You might not have any motivation. You might have less interaction. Uh, you might have more to do, more work. Even though they say home, it's easier. It's not. I don't think so. If you have kids. Hi, Vanessa. I think if you have kids or a partner at home and you have to work from home, you don't necessarily do less. You do more. My husband works from home now and he is overworking. He's, it's harder to put boundaries if you're into, <laughs> if you're not in the office. So, so I understand that it's more difficult to take care of yourself. And that's the most important thing. Hi, Kathleen. So two boosties are here. Hello. Uh, I was just talking about uh, why this video, why another one this week? Because, hi, Julie. The first Q&A I did was uh, for Boost, for my boosties, my online students. And there I talked about how I got out of pain and why I created Boost. The second one yesterday was, I started out about dance, but then it became about staying creative and how to be able to create even regularly uh, on the dot, how to cultivate your creativity. So yesterday's video is for that. Today, cross training, different hobbies, how to combine your interests and don't get lost. So that's, that's what I hope to talk about today. If you have any questions, let me know. So the things I do, belly dance as main thing for 19 years, ballet for 15 years. So I started a few years after doing belly dance, I added ballet to improve my technique and it worked, but it was hard at the beginning. Later, 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 martial arts on the timeline started, Taekwondo. And this was because my husband and I were giving ourselves uh, a gift for my birthday. We had a massage, Thai massage, and there we had a magazine with on the cover, a very martial looking dude with a sword 
uh, looking across a hilltop. And we thought, wow, we are both into martial arts movies. And we thought, who is this? Who is this uh, uh, grandmaster in a field? So we read this booklet while we were waiting for our massage. <laughs> and in this booklet was an interview, a four page interview with Master Che, Grandmaster Che. And it turns out in Eshwala, where we live, there's a Korean grandmaster living five minutes or teaching five minutes from our home by car to adult beginners in Taekwondo, which is what they use in movies because it's a lot of, there's the spin kicks and the high kicks. It's very spectacular and very 3D. So they use it in all the films. And he also, because he was holding a sword, he's also a grandmaster in Korean sword art, where they cut with real swords, not in practice. You, you get to practice with a wooden sword as a beginner, so you don't hurt yourself or others. And uh, the sharp sword is for the black belt. So we are working our way towards that. You don't even use the sharp sword in class. You use it to uh, cut bamboo and to cut straw. So to, to show your skills, you have to cut with the sharp sword for belt tests, for tests and for demonstrations. But they don't let people with sharp swords in a workshop, which is, which is great because one never knows. You could hurt yourself. Uh, and once something is cut off, it won't grow back. We're not lizards, we're not uh, geckos. So <laughs> that to the side, I will talk about my martial arts journey in a moment, if you like. So I started belly dancing, then I added ballet. Then I was in pain, I got out of pain in the middle. So that's what I was talking about to my boosies. Then I started martial arts because we found out there's a grandmaster in our village, well, town, <laughs> it's between town and village. And because I was feeling my body was working again, I was out of pain, and I wanted to do something physical. I wanted to celebrate because I had not been dancing for a long time because of being in pain. And this was my way back into movement, martial arts. And it blew my mind, it blew my mind how much you can still learn as an adult. So I thank the, the fact that we uh, have martial arts. I think martial arts is very good for everyone. It's, it teaches you how to use your body in the way it's designed and it optimizes your skills from the very ground level. And that's what I will talk about later, how to use all your hobbies to your advantage by adding something a layer deeper. So martial arts was my spark for that. So after starting Taekwondo, I was inspired to take on point work because in Taekwondo, we had to learn to do kicks and those kicks, if you're not used to them, they can feel pretty awkward. I could do a front kick because in ballet you do put your leg up to the front, but I was doing them with a pointed foot and not, and not with the ball of my foot. And I was turning out my leg because of ballet and not being parallel. So all this um, uh, working on my turnout, which was always difficult for me, started to pay off because in Taekwondo, I was not able to not turn out. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a good balance also, but the side kicks for which you would have to twist on your pelvis and open up the hip. That's where I was still in a bit of trauma from the, uh, the injury I had before. And that's where my muscles were still on lock and not letting me move freely. So I still had some struggles, struggles in Taekwondo, but it taught me that, okay, there's more that I can do. There's more movement potential that I'm not using yet. Anyway, by learning to do things that felt super awkward and having to do it, I know as dancers, we can get into the zone where you come to class and you feel like you have to perform. You have to be able to do it. You have to please your teacher uh, in order to get more feedback. So you want to do it correctly before learning how to do what you need to do. And this is something that I noticed in ballet on learning, on making mistakes, on allowing yourself to make mistakes. So a little <laughs> side chapter. If you allow yourself to make mistakes and make them big, and our ballet teacher told us this, she is a very wise teacher, Constanze, thank you. Uh, she told us, make mistakes, make big mistakes. Don't hold back so much because I see you like kind of hiding your, hiding your limits and then I cannot help you through them. And all of this made sense for my mind, but my body didn't want to do it. I felt, my ego felt, I am a dancer. I need to be able to do this. And this, I need to be able to do this, was holding me back from going out of my comfort zone far enough to learn something new. 
So for years in ballet, I had a certain progression and again, a long plateau. So <laughs> I hope people learn from my mistakes because I learned everything backwards. I started with the thing that helped the most, the latest. That's what we get to. And um, if I had done what I'm doing now, before I started doing belly dance 20 years ago, oh my God, I don't know how much more I could have done. <laughs> but still, better late than very late, yes? I don't, I'm not giving up yet. I am now, I've now signed up for classes with teachers I admire in the coming month. So in February will be for me input month. This weekend, thanks to uh, Sophie Zilla, also uh, a boosty from last year, I have signed up with Ilhan Rivière. He's a gorgeous French dancer. He uses different dance forms. So it's modern dance. Um, tribal fusion is how he started out. He was a student of Rachel Bryce, for those who still know them, belly dance superstars. And he is amazing, very young, very wise. And I am excited to study with him for the first time online. It's a three day thing. It's called, oh, I will add a link down there. It's three days. It's four hours, then three hours, three hours, so many hours in one. And then starting next week, I will have three weekends where I'm studying with Diva Darina. And I think you may know her. She's also a gorgeous dancer. I took a workshop with her um, last year, no, two years ago in Belgium, in Vervius. Duo Kukles organized it. And she, like Alex Delora, who is also someone I'm studying with online, is an amazing dancer, an amazing performer. And also in a workshop, she taught us that it's better to do less dancing in the beginning. It's better to do less drilling, but to work on your body skills first. You first work on your strength, flexibility, your joint movements. Then you add on classical dance like ballet. Then you add belly dance. That's her system. And it works. If you see her students, if you see her, that's how it should be done. And what I did, <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite. I started with belly dance, then I added ballet, then I added different sports that took it a level deeper. And then what I'm doing now, what helps the most, is I'm working on my body skills separately or underneath. I'm doing strength work, but full body strength, functional strength work uh, with kettlebells. And if you're interested in kettlebells, this weekend, <laughs> if, you, if you see this live, Saturday 6th of February, we have a guest class with a professional coach specialized in kettlebell training. And I'm excited because my kettlebell training is so basic, but it's still super, super, super effective. And I want to learn a few new tips, get some feedback and get some more ideas so I can use it in my boost classes and for myself. So this weekend, kettlebell basics with Dennis, I'll add a link if you want to learn more about that. So that's one thing I do. I work on strengthening, activating my joints, and integrating my, <laughs> my body again so I can move better, so I am more mobile. Uh, my body movement patterns are more balanced because I had imbalances everywhere from this spinal misalignment. And also it helps me to stay fit. So I have a little system, uh, a once a week workout, which I will talk about later in this class. And I will be sharing my workout Fit with Kalida, I will call it. That's a new thing I will be doing in this group. So if you're excited about that, you can... <laughs> I want to do more than once a week workout. Once a week is good. It's enough to keep maintenance, maintaining your body to <clears throat> enable yourself to do what you want to do. But if you do it two times a week, it's better because then you have double the effect and it compounds. So I want to get a bit stronger again. I want to get a bit more mobile again now that I'm pain free. And before the martial arts classes start again, I want to be a bit more fit than I am now. So it's for health, it's for fitness. Fit with Kalida, <laughs> put it in the back of your mind, will be coming here as a weekly series in Joy of Movement. So if you're interested in that, put me a yes in the, in the comments below and I'll be sure to contact you or let you know, send you a notification or something as soon as I start the Fit with Kalida <laughs> thing here on uh, Facebook Live in this group, Joy of Movement. Anyway, through martial arts, I learned that as an adult, you can still improve your body skills, even at 40. I am 40 now, but I'm fitter than I was at 30, and I'm smarter than I was at 20. And I hope the combination of this will enable me to keep on dancing, to keep on moving, and to keep on learning, because that's what I love to do. I love learning. I am kind of addicted to learning, but in a good way. I try to combine it, <laughs> make it doable for life, even though there's... Sometimes I do more of one thing, 
Sometimes I do more of another. It goes, it ebbs and flows. It ebbs and flows. But I, I do my best to not get overwhelmed by journaling and the things I talked about yesterday in my Q&A. Anyway, so this strength training is one big thing. Second big thing is flexibility work. And that's something I never liked. I didn't like to stretch because I felt it, it didn't help my body. Uh, as a young, young baby, of course, I was flexible like everyone. And I kind of lost my flexibility over time. As a kid, I couldn't do the splits because I wasn't interested in it. I never practiced or maintained my flexibility. So as an adult, working a full-time job in IT, I became less and less flexible. Even though belly dance helped me a little, it, I still had my limits. I, I could work up, up to a certain limit and then I had no time for more drilling. I had no time for flexibility work on top because it wasn't effective, it wasn't effective. So I didn't know, I thought it's maybe not for me. But since I've been doing strength work and my joints work better and I have a better connection mind-body connection and since I've been doing meditation also to deepen just feeling where my body's at my flexibility work is becoming more effective so I now have found a very 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 good online teacher her name is Stacy Nimore and she also has donated a guest class to our solidarity channel online for children and her method is much more gentle than the stretching that I thought I needed to do I thought because I'm adult and because I'm very stiff, I need to do a lot and I need to do it hard and it needs to hurt. <laughs> and it's not true. Even though stretching can be uncomfortable, um, as soon as you, as you are able to work on it in a consistent and safe and gentle way, it starts to feel more good for your body. So it's, it's maybe only the first week or so when you're still working through, um, how to say it, uh, you can have connective tissue that gets stuck and this you might have to get unstuck through massage as well as um, as well as a bit of strength work just to wake up the things and movement to get blood and lymph flow going if all this works and you're not stressed then flexibility work is what you can do but i wouldn't start with it i would start okay here's the rundown if you want to improve your whatever, your dancing, your other hobby, anything with movement, start from the very, very, very bottom. Start with your life. Okay. <laughs> Good advice from Aunt Kalida. First thing to do is take a look around, take a step back, have a little break. It can be just a one day break or just a couple of hours, but take a step back, take a breath and see what you are doing. Maybe write down what you are doing right now. So if you want to get stronger, if strength is what you're doing and you're not progressing or if you want to learn a certain technique and you're not progressing or a sport and you're stuck or you're getting more and more injuries, take that step back and take stock of what you're doing now. Then take a look at your environment, external and internal. The basics, they make the most difference. Are you hydrated? Are you hydrating yourself? If not, biochemistry will not work as well as it's designed. So your muscles will be less able to relax. They can contract but get stuck here if they're dehydrated. So they will not let go and not let you work and uh, make more uh, toxic waste. Your cells will not make you make more toxic waste if there's some clogging going on. So if you don't move enough and your lymph flow is kind of clogged, you're supposed to move these parts these parts and these parts that's where the most lymph nodes are and they are designed to pump through movement so if you don't move your lymph gets stale and that means the the waste processing from your muscle activity cannot be transported to the heart and filtered and this means that your muscles are not able to dispose of their waste your muscle fibers and this means they will not let you work more until you clean up the garbage so <laughs> so first thing is Hydrate, hydrate because that gets the limb flowing. Second is just move, just move, just move freely, move your joints, nothing crazy. Just move a bit to get your uh, body systems flowing again. So hydrate and move a bit. Third, because if you are at your desk for eight hours a day or if you are seated or if you're at the phone a lot, don't expect your body to just move after that. You have to give it this transition time you have to give it a bit of movement and bless it your body will respond with improvement and with more movement if you give it that just hydrate and move a bit 
spread out through the day and uh, gradually and that already will make a world of difference so once you've sorted that go deeper what else can you do that's not practice that will make everything else better sleep <laughs> sleep because uh, also this is about your biochemistry your biochemistry can get messed up if you don't give your body rest if you cannot sleep or if you have sleep problems naps and meditation are a good kind of kind of the same similar thing you can um, you can supplement if your sleep is problematic it might get better with hydration and movement combined so you might have to build this up peel the layers of dysfunction <laughs> but but sleep is so important i've read a book uh, why we sleep it's about the science behind sleep and there's not that much known about it widely yet i recommend this book very very heartily if you read why why we sleep you will never think about sleep the same again and you will allow yourself these 15 minutes more if you have the time for it you will not force yourself to stay up longer to do more work you will know that you are actually um, damaging your brain if you don't give it sleep and if you don't give it rest and or meditation or whatever it needs it needs it to regenerate like your lymph it needs it biochemically so if you're not into woo <laughs> then believe the science scientifically you cannot function uh, people die if they are deprived of sleep for a couple of days i hope you know that yes <laughs> so it is very serious sleep is something quite mysterious because um, it makes you as an animal very vulnerable why do people and animals sleep it's something to think about <laughs> apparently it is so important that it's worth the risk that you can get attacked by lions for 80, 80 hours of your day um, and um, and then you function again it is a big part of your life and you should respect it respect sleep respect rest if you want to get stronger and you don't rest guess what you will not get stronger because also again the biochemistry of strength works after you give it the input it's between the two workouts that getting stronger or getting more flexible or any change happens between the inputs in the rest. That's where the body adapts. And um, knowing this for me made a world of difference. So I hope this, I hope this sparks a bit of motivation to give yourself rest. We are so hard on ourselves. Um, pushing, 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 because we are being pushed from the outside. You have to be this, you have to do that. Uh, you have to accomplish this to be okay you have to uh, get that you have to have that to be happy it's all nonsense it's all nonsense all we need to do is take care of ourselves and then <laughs> you are more able to judge what it is that you do need and what it is that you don't need so <laughs> hydrate move a little throughout the day get your lymph flowing and already you will feel tons better <laughs> third uh, sleep or rest or meditation or a combination of the three just no input just processing biochemistry but also thoughts yes it's very connected you give yourself processing time otherwise you'll get stuck after a while you might be able to to kind of function for a while but then after a while you hit your wall and you don't want to hit that wall you want to be able to grow over it and for that you need rest <laughs> okay next to that how is your environment? Are the people around you, maybe there's not much people around you now, I'm sorry, <laughs> but if the people that are around you, if you can choose them, are they the ones that give you energy? Are they the ones that make you feel good? Are they the ones that make you feel like you can be yourself or not? That's something to think about. That's something to think about because it can be not a choice, but then at least you know you have something uh, that needs to be handled or you need to protect yourself more actively or you get yourself a healthier environment people-wise if it's online communities you can choose even though it might be hard to let go of habits online habits also shield yourself unfollow whatever makes you feel mm, icky unfollow whoever makes you feel like you are not good enough as you are and uh, surround yourself with positivity it is possible i know it sounds a bit trope but in these times, in times of pandemic, but actually all the time, you need to balance out what's what's being thrown at you. And that's always things that to make you afraid. 
They make you afraid that you're not good enough. They make you afraid that you don't have enough. So you buy things, so you get things, uh, so you consume. Yes, so <laughs> shield yourself from consumer uh, tactics or consumerism tactics. Yes, everyone wants to sell you something. You can shield yourself from it, but you have to actively do it. It's now already so far that you cannot almost uh, escape from advertisements and it's in everything. So be aware of it. Take steps back from it. Uh, no TV for a day and uh, no scrolling things that make you feel bad. Give yourself a break. Give yourself maybe also a, a media break. I don't watch the news um, almost. I don't watch it almost at all anymore. Once a week maybe to check in to see <laughs> <laughs> how the other countries are doing but uh, if I watch it every day it just doesn't help and it's 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 not helpful it's not helpful you want to be aware but you don't want to flood yourself with with nonsense actually there's more to life than the news there's more to life than what others are doing you should um, <laughs> take care of you and then the rest will become easier so shield yourself that's my other one and once you've shielded yourself, you may have an easier time judging what it is you should be doing. What is it that's important? Who is it that's important? And once you have that sorted out, then you can start <laughs> thinking about your hobbies, your passion, your uh, drive, your work, whatever you want to make. Take care of the basics first. Get yourself some sleep, get yourself some rest, walk in the woods, but protect yourself from ticks. <laughs> walk in the woods, but shield yourself from uh, uh, animals. Um, anyway, if you can get out in nature and refresh your mind, or if you can take a long shower, or if you can do anything that soothes you, or cook a good meal for yourself or loved ones, anything you can do that makes you feel okay, makes you feel grounded, makes you feel coming at home. Maybe it's dance, maybe putting on some music and just moving. It doesn't have to be anything productive, that's what I want to say. If you can do that, you'll start restoring your energy and then you will start uh, becoming more able, capable of taking a step back and become strategic. If you can become strategic about what you do, you can do a lot more with less. Yes, okay. So if you are a bit rested, if you have had your water, if you have uh, a better environment people-wise and uh, also input-wise, and if you can get yourself a bit of time to listen into yourself, be it walking, moving, or just quietly, uh, or while you do chores, then you're good to go. Then I would start with whatever you want. Yes, if you want to get a bit stronger or faster or get good reflexes, something like martial arts would be good to do. But if you feel like you have restrictions, then do functional training first. It can be bodywork training or kettlebell training or weights training, but functional, something full body, something that makes you move better. And if you have any pain restrictions, take care of that first because, because you can have some dysfunctions or imbalances and putting strength on imbalances just makes them worse. It just makes your body protect itself more. So first, Take care of how your body is doing. If you have one foot, for instance, that doesn't move and your knee is hurting, go to someone who can help you with that foot. There's people now online. There's very good teachers now online. And I know I keep mentioning them. I am not affiliated. I don't get any percentage for this, but I know they are very, very smart in what they do. And they have helped me get out of pain. And I want more people to be pain-free so more people can get creative and have more enjoyment of life and then inspire other people. So, uh, Gary Ward's Wake Your Feet Up and Wake Your Body Up mini courses, they are uh, self-study, but also his Instagram, it's, I think it's Gary underscore Ward, I will link to it. Uh, there you will see how much is possible, even if you have been in pain for years and years and years and years and you don't know what to do and you're getting worse, going to the source of the problems. And usually it's something movement related. It may be a trauma, it may be a, an injury that has healed, but the body is kind of still holding some things, holding some tension and the bones in your feet, for instance, are not moving, which means the bones connected to those are not moving in all the directions they should, which means they are kind of restricted, which means maybe the muscles will hold or not allow you in certain directions because it needs the little bones to move. And then 
you have tension on the knees, you have tension here, your hip, this is my leg, <laughs> your hip might start hurting. That may pull on your pelvis, your pelvis might twist. If your pelvis twists, then your spine is gonna go. If your spine's gonna go, pain will come out in different parts. Your neck might get stuck and, and you may like, be like this and think you're okay. Um, you may be like this and think uh, there's nothing I can do. There are maybe things you can do. So check out Gary Ward's Anatomy in Motion, his Wake Your Feet Up, Wake Your Body Up mini course. I think it's just 15 pounds, which is very cheap. And you can have those videos forever. And they may give you mm, a direction. Where can you go next to give yourself more movement? Monica Volkmar is my teacher. She's the one that got me out of pain and Gary Ward is her teacher. So it's, there's like a lineage of helping people out of pain through movement, no operations, movement first. And then you can see if you need other treatments. Maybe you need manual treatment, maybe you need uh, uh, surgery. But go from uh, non-invasive and searching for the cause first, treating the cause first, giving your body some time to adapt to that, then maybe manual therapy, give your body time to adapt to that. And that may be strengthening or rebalancing with uh, some healthy uh, full body strength work. Uh, maybe some stretching, but that's after you, after you figured out uh, what needs it. Because if you stretch just where you feel tight, you might be working on a different part than what is causing the tightness. Your body is intelligent. It'll give you tightness if it needs to protect something, but the cause of this protection might be something else that's not moving. Usually, if something is tight, something else is not moving. And if you can get it to move, magic may happen. We try this with socks. I will add a link to the sock tip drop. <laughs> this is something I experimented with on, uh, on myself, my husband and my online students. And the, the result was what they told me they felt afterwards was, I love this uh, uh, expression, my joints were like butter. Mm, isn't that a nice thing? And the exercise we did was simple and um, it was just moving with our foot a bit supported. And all we did was, was move in and out a certain range with our foot bones differently supported. So they had a different alignment. So the muscles had different reactions for a couple of seconds. And then we compared and then the joints felt like butter. Another uh, boosty said that later in the day she had better balance and body control. And I didn't even expect that. I was just, I wanted to show this because one, one student, one boosty had a problem with the knee and I hoped it would release the, the shin or calf muscle a bit. So it did so much more. So that's how powerful movement can be, especially in the feet. So <laughs> if you want to do cross training, go to the source, take care of yourself like you would take care of a pet. Yes, water it, feed it, give it some rest, give it some movement. The basics, anyone can do this. It doesn't need to be a lot. A little goes a long way. Then you get uh, then you get more friendly with your body and your body will tell you in more detail what it needs. And that may be movement in certain parts where you have not been moving for a long time. It can be 20 years, it's never too late. And that's also something very important and something that I did not know. If you're stuck for years, a few seconds can make a difference. It may take longer, especially if muscles have shortened, really shortened, you may have to work with them over a longer time. But usually it's more neurological. It's more your body holding something. Um, something that also blew my mind a bit. If you put someone under sedation for, um, for surgery, for instance, all the muscle tone, all the muscle tension disappears. So even if you're like that, <laughs> on the operation table, you are so you are fully relaxed. Once you fire up the brain again, once you wake up, the muscle tension comes back. So there is some intelligence behind it and you just have to find someone or figure it out for yourself. Uh, find someone to help you maybe get there quicker. See what needs movement. See what needs um, some attention so the rest can move freely again and it can do miracles, especially if it's, uh, <laughs> if it's spine related or foot related or joints related. Okay, <laughs> okay, that was a long rant about that. I still have 15 minutes left, so let me go back to, let me go back to, yes, what else can you do? Strength training, and then flexibility, do them together. They are two parts of the same coin. If I do my strict strength 
routine, my weekly workout with Mr. E. We do this on Sunday. I will post on it in the blog. I will post what our routine now is and then how I built it up. I will do this in the Facebook Lives. So our weekly workout is uh, very efficient cardio. I don't like cardio. I don't run. I don't run. I now run for fun and we have to run in martial arts classes as a warm-up. You have to just run back and forth and it always, it always killed me. I never liked running as a kid, but I found out that if I do jump roping, that's my secret. I got this from a book called The One Minute Workout. It's brilliant. Uh, so just jump roping, <laughs> jumping rope, skipping rope. That's my secret for better uh, stamina better uh, ability to jump also for ballet and better better health whenever i get a uh, uh, winter toes if it's too cold and my toes get kind of creaky if i do the jumping training i, I do wear shoes i have very light shoes uh, where the toes can spread because when i skip the rope and i jump on it it hurts yes so when i have done jump training after that my winter toes they're happy again. So <laughs> it's very good for circulation. It's good for your bones because they get stronger with uh, impact. I do my jump roping on a Pilates mat, so I don't... Uh... Yes, 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 yes. Gary Ward, I will, I will. Um, I Maybe I can, maybe I can do it here. Maybe, yes, okay. I will post his name. Voila. <laughs> That's him, Gary Ward. If you type him in, you will find him here on Facebook. And if you type him in Instagram, that's where you will find the very interesting uh, posts about movements of the joint and the feet. He has been posting a lot about bunions. If you have bunions, you check him out. But also about knee health, uh, ankle health, and how it works its way up to the head, to the body. So he is uh, he's amazing. I'm happy he exists. So <laughs> for fun and fitness, for, for dying less if you have to run. Now I can run for fun up a hill in the woods. I was not able to do that. And that's because I do jump roping. I will do a separate Facebook Live on my jump roping routine because it's not too bad. I don't, like, I don't like feeling like I'm dying if I work out. And this is a very good way to do it efficiently. Just once a week it makes a world of difference. I may do it twice a week later if martial arts classes start up again and it's, it's tough. <laughs> but for now, once a week, it's good. If I don't do it, I miss it already. So yes, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Okay, so jumping rope. Second thing we do is a warm up with kettlebells or with weights. And that's what we do in the boost classes. And this is from a book called Simple and Sinister by Pavel Tsatsourin. He is a super interesting guy. I will be typing him P-A-V-E-L Tsatsourin. He's a Russian dude. And he brought kettlebell training to America. <laughs> he brought kettlebell training to America. And I have his DVDs, which are hilarious. You can, you can even watch them on YouTube for free now. But he, he talks to people and he says, Comrade, do you wonder? And <laughs> he's actually super, super intelligent. He has written a couple of books. And he used to be a trainer for the Navy SEALs. So that's how efficient his strength work is. And he is my go-to person. I listen to all his podcast interviews on the science of strength. And that's why I will never ever uh, kill myself in a workout. I, will, I won't do uh, what they do in cross training and put myself on a timer and do as many as I can. I used to do that and I just, it doesn't work as well as uh, intelligent strength training. Hi, Jan. Intelligent strength training, like Pavel Tsatsoulin's, system and this book simple and sinister it's brilliant that's what we use as the base of our strength training and that's what we use as the base of our boost strength days on mondays so boosties check out this book if you want to know the source and uh, he is a joy to listen to so if you want to geek out on strength pavel tatsulin he might make you fall in love with kettlebell training okay then after the kettlebell warm-up we do kettlebell swings and Turkish get-ups. And Turkish get-ups, that's also something that we're working on in Boost because that's a, a way of realigning your, or not reconnecting, reintegrating your movement patterns. First you do it without weight, then you add a little weight and then you can add more. But first you work on the technique and the positions and that's what we will be doing in the next few months. We work on 
one um, sequence, part of the sequence of a Turkish getup in per two weeks, so you can feel and tweak the difference, and then afterwards your Turkish getup will be clean, and then you can progress. Each of the parts of a Turkish getup, <laughs> I, I wrote a blog about it because it's one of my favorite movements in the world. Each of the positions is like physiotherapy in its own, and each of the positions can be used as the base of an exercise for balance or for for your shoulders or for your hips. And um, I might dive into that in the Fit with Kalida Facebook Lives that I'll be doing in this group also. So <laughs> stay tuned. I want to use this group. I haven't been posting here a lot, my apologies, because I didn't really, I wanted to make it something um, useful, but I wasn't yet sure how to structure it. So I think weekly Facebook Lives on Thursday, this is my, my kind of kickoff, where I talk about uh, my fitness, what I do for my fitness, uh, what I think is effective and efficient, and where I share how I do it, bit by bit, and then later on it will become little follow-along routines. But first we do the techniques, we take our time to dive into each one. Then you can ask me questions, and then uh, the week after we do something else, and then when everything's complete, we do little workouts using the parts of this um, series. So that's my fit with Kalina. It's not fitness, uh, regular fitness. You can do that on top. This is something that to help you with other things that you want to do. So it, what, if you want to do workouts, if that's your fun thing to do, doing the fit with Kalida videos or watching them might give you more tips on how to do them more efficiently, more effectively and safely. Maybe. That's my hope. It's my hope to add something to what you already do. Okay. Turkish getup. Then the Turkish getup, we combine it with kettlebell swings. And that's a very basic but super powerful movement because it makes you strong in the whole body. You do a kind of squat, like the goblet squat. You, stra you straighten and then your arms swing passively. And the magic of a kettlebell swing happens when the kettlebell comes down and you keep your posture against it. It's like posture power training. This weight comes down with force and you don't hang. You keep your posture and then you hinge at the hips. This, this joint that we use, not enough. We use the back more than the hips pelvis. And if we can train the pelvis to bend, so that's where the legs bend is what I mean. So going back, that's when you balance out and your back has to move, has to less compensate and then will release the tension it's holding because you're making it do things it's not designed for. Your hip hinge, if you can open that up, and swings will help you do that, will free up the rest of your spine, hopefully, over time. At least it will give you a good solid base from where the rest can slowly release. So that's what we do. After swings and Turkish get-ups, we do sometimes bonus abdominal work, like Johanna's uh, ab ABC. We did this this week. So we do ab work if we need something extra. It's optional and then whatever we like. Enz likes to work on his shoulders with some weights. That's also exercise we do on Mondays in the boost class because uh, he works on a computer a lot and he's very focused, so he needs opening up there. And I like to work on my hips more because I do ballet, so I work on my turnout. So that's the bonus things we do after the strength training. We do mobility work, I would say, I would call it, and a bit of abs, core activation. After that, we do stretching. So if you want to stretch, Combine it with strength work uh, or wake your body up first, then stretch it. Because if you start with the stretching, um, then, then you are missing the opportunity to useful range of motion. Uh, Stacey Nemours stretching courses, they work quite actively, also with resistance. So that's, that's a good way to get into flexibility work. If you're not flexible and you don't know where to start, Stacey Nemours courses are safer than anything else I've ever tried. But I still like to do something before I do her courses. Because I'm 41, <laughs> I'm not 20 anymore. And I notice that if I move my joints first, or if I do the sock trick first from Gary Ward, then if I do flexibility work after, I have more range of motion to start with. And it's not so much of a struggle. So, um, so you use it intelligently. The timing is everything and uh, also the rest in between. If I would work out every day, I would get less and less uh, benefit and maybe even lose strength because my body is not able to, to adapt to catch up and biochemically it will degrade, it will eat my muscle to, um, to recover from the workout. So 
never overdo it. Even if you uh, are doing strength work and oh, you feel it, it may be good. It's not bad to have muscle soreness. It may tell you even if it's on one side that one side needed more attention, that one side actually needed activation and had been asleep. I had this with my obliques when my pelvis was twisted. It was because one part of my obliques, this side, was on vacation and doing some exercises for the obliques woke it up. So it was full body exercises, but um, it, it asked my obliques to activate because of the position I was in. And then I was sore for three days, very sore. I didn't exercise or do anything in these three days. I just gave myself some rest and gentle movement and a bit of massage. And then afterwards, I felt like I could walk on clouds. So give yourself the time after a good workout to, uh, to feel the effect of being stronger and then do it again. So if you want to be most effective, I would say two times per week or three times per week. Hi Sabine. And if you do it more often, then do different things. You can maybe do the jump roping on one day and then if your calf muscles aren't too sore, you can work out on the next day. But I like to do those on the same day, but not too much. I do a little and then I do a little later on in the week. This way, my body can catch up and then I can add a new workout on top of it and it compounds. And this may not feel like you're doing the maximum that you could do, but it does enable you then to keep doing your dancing, to keep doing your walking, to keep doing the other things in life because it doesn't take up your whole life to work out. You don't have to go running for an hour for fitness. You do 15 minutes of jump rope once a week and you've skipped all the hours of running. Then if you run, you can run. It goes then for fun and not, not because it's necessary. And also you're not punishing your body so much. You don't want to have so much repetition of movement. You want to have varied movement. That's my final tip for today. Do as many things as you like. It, it doesn't have to be restricted to what's functional for uh, your hobby. I always thought in the beginning when I did ballet dance that I should only do ballet because ballet is kind of connected, but I shouldn't do it too balletic. I was afraid to model up my art <laughs> with, with other inputs. And then I realized later on that uh, belly dance itself and any dance form itself is a living thing and it's always a mix of different. It has a history of different dance forms that are combined. Belly dance, for instance, it's a folklore from different countries, it's, uh, but also influenced by ballet. Samia Gamal had a Russian teacher who gave her the veil. So she did ballet training. And that for me was a very big comfort that you can learn from other art forms and then it becomes your own mix. It's good to know if you have a cultural hobby like uh, oriental dance, like belly dance, it's good to know what you are doing. Yes, you don't want to um, appropriate too much. You want to, at least if you call it belly dance, know what you are doing. And then if you want to make it different, make it your own, just be aware of it. You, you're just aware of it. You're not just mixing it up and saying, oh, I, I created my own style just for the heck of it. But you can use any dance form, any art form, any movement form to your benefit. If you think about, so that was my final uh, tip. If you think about what's underneath, what are the what are the things that you like about a certain art form that you could use in a different thing? For instance, if you're a painter, let's take painting. If you are a painter, it can help your belly dance. Why? Because painters train their eyes, they train their visuals, and they can then also imagine a visual that they want to put on a stage. I am not a painter, but I used to draw. I used to draw a lot as a kid and I loved um, art class. I just never did anything with it as an adult, but I also love photography. That's now how I do it. I like taking pictures uh, when the light hits something in a beautiful way. And um, I like playing with light and I like nature pictures. So also I like looking at beautiful um, dance performances from, or ice skating performances or um, modern dance, ballet, flamenco, anything that moves me goes into my mind and this visual works its way works its way into my choreographies. I've posted a dance from a year ago today on my Kalida, Kim Kalida Bech um, thing and that the veil part is very influenced by ballet. It's ballet music even, so it's fusion. It's fusion and it, it's my uh, attempt to show that it's um, possible to take two art forms that if you see them um, 
in their purest form seem miles away and opposite, you can combine them. If you take the essence of it, that may help. For ballet, for me, that is the legwork, the arm lines and the, the fluidity because they use their upper body a lot. And that's something in ballet dance classes, beginner classes, you learn to isolate, but there's no actual teaching of what to do with the body except for that you try to copy your teacher, try to copy videos that you like. But if you want to learn to do it, in ballet, that's what you learn. You learn to use your frames, your limbs, your spine, your head, all the angles, that's all ballet. And it all looks beautiful. If you put belly dance on top, you get a beautiful stage performances. So that's perfect for stage. Um, something like martial arts, which I thought would really uh, damage my belly dancing. Because it's, it's, for my mind, if I watch a martial arts movie, it feels so opposite from dancing, yet it's aesthetic also. So uh, dancing for me is not aggressive, <laughs> at least most of the time, no. Uh, but once I started to realize, no, 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 the, the beauty of movement of someone who's really good at martial arts. So if you look at the, the excellence in it, for instance, our teacher, Master Che, he moves so beautifully. He, he can just show you a basic stance in Taekwondo or just a basic cut in uh, Heilong Gumdo in Korean sword. And it makes me want to cry. So if you can find a master in something or Constanze, if she takes applause after the ballet evening where the, the girls have danced, you are intrigued by her, her stage persona. She, she stands beautifully. And this is an art, and this is something you can learn, practice, work towards, and then use in everything else in life. Same for martial arts. The beauty of movement, the fluidity, the, the mind-body connection, the, the strength and the, the joy of movement that you can take from martial arts, from martial arts training, and put it into dance or put it into different movement hobbies. I think martial arts are a very good base, as I said, um, here I go again. <laughs> martial arts training has realized, helped me realize that as an adult, you can still learn new movement skills, totally new ones. I could not do a uh, roundhouse kick for, for my life. I just did kind of football kicks and it didn't get better, even after two years. And why didn't it get better? Because I had movement habits that were in my way and I didn't realize it. So martial arts forced me to go out of my comfort zone because I was doing it as I thought was comfortable. I had to do it in a way that felt totally awkward and weird and unknown before it got better. And it looked quite, it looked quite silly. So martial arts has helped me to get over my fear of looking silly in practice, looking silly in class, even with all the people looking at you <laughs> and the teacher. And um, this is something that has been so helpful because in ballet, it's the same. As I was saying an hour ago, as girls in ballet, we want to do it correctly already and we're kind of, kind of tightened up trying to do it perfect, yes? And then comes a ballet boy. Two, two boys came in. They had not done ballet before and they just went for it. They just went crazy for it. So they, they made jumps with legs and arms everywhere and they landed awkwardly and <laughs> they scared Constanza with their movements, but they were very clear in their movement. They did it all full out, everything they did. So Constanza had a very good idea of, okay, what's happening? How can we tweak it? And how can I direct it? And if you're in ballet, you're doing tiny movements or you're trying to hide your flaws, you will not get the efficient feedback as when you do it full on, may be wrong, but if you have a good teacher, she will help you. And we saw miracles happen with the ballet boys because they were not afraid to look silly. All of us girls were looking and they just jumped and landed badly and it was fine. And they become better, better, better. And they progressed over all our heads just because they went for it. And that's my other message to you. Just go for it. Just be bad in class, yes? Just practice as you feel it and uh, try. Try things that feel maybe uncomfortable. You will see that the progression goes very fast after that. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap it up. <laughs> yes, we are over an hour. I started a bit late, but we're well over an hour. I don't want to make these like forever. I will put this video on YouTube, on my channel, youtube.com slash Kalida, and wait for a couple of days until uh, YouTube puts subtitles under it. And then I will make chapters so you can find the little bits of information under it. 
and I will add all the blog links that I refer to. So there's three Q&As you can find on youtube.com slash Kalida in a couple of days. First one is about Boost, but also how I got out of pain. So if you need any references for that, my Q&A, why I created Boost, also why I think movement is important. The second Q&A, I put it up yesterday, is about how to take care of yourself and stay creative even in these crazy times. Plus, I start with an update of, on what I am doing online right now. And this one is the first video about cross training. I talked a bit about how I um, discovered different movement arts and how I combine them now. And also my tips on how to start taking care of yourself so the rest becomes easier. So how to be more efficient. Let me recap for you very quickly. If you are stuck at a certain level or if you are interested in different things and don't know how to combine them, take a step back first. Make sure you are well taken care of. Food that nourishes you, uh, healthy, healthy stuff, preferably. Um, you, can, you can every now and then eat whatever you like. I think it's good for the body to, to have to process something a bit, maybe less healthy, but comforting. But you balance it out with things that are good for you, yes? Make sure you have all the nutrients you need. So food and water, move a little bit every day, take time, to take a step back and journal and shield yourself from outside influences for a bit so you can figure out what it is you want. Then for your body, start with um, checking where you're at and removing any... Thank you, thank you, Julie. Start with checking how you are doing now, see if anything is stuck and needs some love and needs some movement and get yourself some help with that and you might have so much more effect of everything else you do. Then, once you think, yeah, okay, I am ready for more, do some intelligent st strength training and some intelligent, maybe, stamina and stretching. Combine it, and then your body is ready for whatever else you want to do. This is how I can do Taekwondo and sword and ballet and belly dance and teach and learn. I can do this. I also do modern dance with uh, my ballet teacher's daughter, Constanze, uh, Julia. So I can do all these things and still have energy to make videos because I'm taking care of the basics first. If I don't, everything else starts falling down like a house of cards. So it's the bottom layer of your house of cards is taking care of you and your loved ones. Health first. The rest, optional. Yes, art will happen if you take care of yourself and you want to sustain it. You want to make something sustainable. You want to keep going, not, not have peaks and crash too much. And for this, you need to be adult about it, <laughs> like I am trying to do. And giving you this advice hopefully will remind me to keep doing it because I have been, again, I've restarted this uh, last couple of weeks and I am feeling, I am feeling a lot better. And also my boosties keep me at it because I've put it in my own classes. I do a bit of strength on Mondays, a little bit of relaxation on Tuesdays, a little bit of dance on Fridays. So it's spread across the week. And this way we all keep moving together. A source about understanding biochemistry better. Let me think about that. I think Pavel Tsatsoulin, he connected with strength. So that's maybe a good one to start. Also the why we sleep. It is a bit medical, but also it, it combines it with um, the biochemistry of sleep. And also um, anything about lymph nodes. Uh, stop chasing pain is a good... Um, I'm saying this aloud, but I will add links later, so I remember. So, yes. For strength biochemistry, Pavel Satsulin's podcasts. Um, for the biochemistry of sleep, the book Why We Sleep. I will add a link, it's in my blog. Then um, on lymph nodes and why the muscles will and will not work. It's an Instagram account called... Stop Chasing Pain by Perry Nicholson. Perry Nicholson, he's also very smart. And then about the biomechanics, that's Gary Ward, the wake your feet up guy. <laughs> Instagram, uh, I think Gary Ward, you type it in, you find it. I will add all those, that's a very good question. And uh, once you have this base, I think you will find other things that uh, might interest you. Also Monica Volkmar's blog, Monica Volkmar Body Work, I will type her in. <laughs> Let me try. Monica Volkmar. She talks a bit about, a lot about um, 
the biochemistry of rest and uh, restoration, why it's important to give yourself a state of safety before you add change to your body. So if you need to change anything, if anything has been stuck for a long time, getting yourself in a restful, as restful as possible state first will allow your body and mind, your, your nervous system actually, will then allow you to try new things. Otherwise it will just, just protect you from it. So I think that's also good. Thank you. Great question. Okay, I will wrap it up. I'm gonna have uh, lunch <laughs> and then I will be putting up this video and adding the show notes, <laughs> as they call it, for the other ones in the couple of next couple of days. And next week I will be online here again. I think on Thursday, I have to think about it. If I can, I will start with Fit with Kalida, just little things, or maybe I will do one more Q&A if there's more questions that pop up before next week. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining in in this little Q&A. I will see you soon online. Next month, there will be a QA. and I'll be doing, doing these once a month, maybe compressed into one. Mm, so any questions you have, shoot, and I will do my best to answer them. Have a great week. Have a great upcoming weekend and see you soon. Bye-bye.